Life can sometimes feel like a race. Who hasn't felt the pressure of trying to run towards a goal line that seems too far away to even see? Students feel pressure more and more each year. Whether you're trying to figure out what classes to take, how to make the varsity sports team, ways to get the debate team to the championship, or planning your future, it can all seem overwhelming. You have so much you want to do, but it seems like other people and your own circumstances get in the way. How do you separate yourself from the pack? Get over that hurdle and cross the finish line. How do you reach your dreams? Hello, I'm Logan Sukman, and today we're going to talk about goals. We're going to meet some young people and hear how they identified and reached their goals. We'll identify some goal setting strategies that you can put to work for yourself. First, let's define exactly what a goal is. A goal is something you want, something you're willing to work for and make some sacrifices to get. Goals take time and effort to complete. I have worked for um, a radio station, it's actually broadcast through a satellite. I have interned at a school for children that teaches acting and worked with them on camera. And now I have an internship at a production company making educational videos. Currently we're sitting in the, uh, in the middle of the Indian Bend Wash in the heart of Scottsdale. Um, standing here because when I was 15 years old, as a sophomore at Saguaro High School, I decided to start a project to save this last bit of area from the golf course to turn into a wildlife park for educational purposes. My goal was to learn more about myself. My goal was to learn how to, to grow more as a person and learn more about others. Starting out, my goal was to eventually play professional tennis and college tennis and eventually make a living out of it. I wanted to learn English. My father always watched American movies like um, John Wayne's movies or any Hollywood movies and I started learning English and I started thinking that English is one of the beautiful languages I ever heard and I wanted to be able to speak that language. Everybody has goals. Morgan's goal is to win a golf tournament next week. Jen's goal is to play professional basketball. Nick hopes to save enough money to buy the stereo he's been wanting. Each of these people has a goal. What varies is the timetable needed for each goal and the steps taken to achieve a particular goal. People who keep their goals in mind see more of their dreams come true than people who are content to let life just happen. Goals motivate. Setting goals and actively working towards their completion gives you confidence and independence. It helps you become the person you want to be. Goal setting will help you be successful and help you make more informed decisions. Each internship has given me something different, something to take away, something that I liked or didn't like, and that helped me go in the right direction. I think with every internship you get to know a company, you get to know the people working there, and since networking is so important in this industry, it leads to something else. Uh, the last internship I was at, um, I told them I was interested in working with children. It was a satellite radio station, and the guy in the cubicle next to me, best friend, worked for Sesame Street. So then I got to go over there, and it just leads, one thing leads to another. So it's just important to keep your eyes and ears open. What started out as a project to save just this local area right here next to my high school quickly turned into an idea for me to show other students the power that they had as young adults. So I started speaking at conferences, telling other students about what has happened to me, everything I've learned, everything that, that my group and I went through that most students would never ever encounter in a high school environment. At one particular conference I was asked to speak at by a gentleman that was putting one on. And he asked, he said, can you speak at my conference? I said, sure. He said, there's one problem, it's in Israel. He said, I'll pay for half your trip as long as you be my keynote speaker. Amazing. Um, from then on, after that, I ended up being able to be a keynote speaker at Princeton. I ended up receiving the Presidential Environmental Award. Also got to meet the Head of Environmental Affairs of the United Nations and get a, a letter supporting my project. A lot of opportunities have opened up with, commu with the different community service I have done. For instance, I have learned that working through the BUDS program with another, little, with another child has led me to teach, start begin teaching at my church to be able to spend all these times with these students and know what a glory it would be for me to just be with them every day. 
I've been happy from what I've done. It's, you know, I mean, put myself in good shape, kept my body healthy, and I'm loving what I'm doing. And that's probably the biggest benefit is that I'm having fun and I'm doing something I enjoy. So what do you want to do? What are your dreams for the future? The first step you need to take is to identify what you hope to accomplish. People who actively identify and pursue their goals are more likely to achieve them. Many people find it helpful to keep a personal journal as a place to record their ideas, dreams, disappointments, and successes. Just as a runner needs a clearly marked path, you will want to chart your course towards reaching your goals. A journal is a good tool to help you identify what is truly important, to chart your personal progress, and to reflect on what is working in your life and where difficulties lie. Use your journal to record your impressions and reflections on a variety of subjects. What do you enjoy doing? What are some of your personal habits you want to change? What brought you joy today? What made you think? What do you wish you could change? These are all great starting points to explore your choices and your dreams. But even before you take this step, you need to define your values, your personal code of ethics. Values define what is most important to you and help you form your rules of personal conduct. Your values are your standards or personal traits that define what kind of person you are. Some examples are honesty, bravery, kindness, and loyalty. These are all traits that give you a moral identity. Having a clear value system will help you focus on who it is you want to become and raise your life to a more meaningful level. Many of you have found a comfortable identity in high school. As you stand on the threshold of the next phase of your life, it is a good idea to pause for a moment and visualize the person you want to be. You have to make a lot of decisions along life's path, decisions that will determine what type of person you become. After defining a type of person that you want to be, it's easier to make decisions to reach your dreams without compromising your values. After you take inventory of your values, record them in your journal. It is important to have a written reminder of what it is you treasure most about yourself. Refer to your values when identifying and prioritizing your goals. Setting goals can help you lead a more balanced life. Do you feel you ignore certain aspects of your life because you don't have the time? Let's look at this list. We all have different compartments in our lives. If you put all your energy into only one aspect of your life, the other parts will suffer. For example, if you've been giving too much energy to your social life, you may notice problems elsewhere. Your grades may be slipping. Your relationship with your parents may be rocky. You might be physically tired and not performing well athletically. Keeping a balance is important in any race. You may want to take time to look at the questions on the balance life sheet and examine your own life for balance. Are there things you're neglecting? You don't want to become a one-sided person. Interesting people are well-rounded in their interests and pursuits. The key is to allow yourself time to care for all areas of your life. So now you're ready to begin that first lap and set some goals. As you know, you don't just go out there and win the race. You have to take it one lap at a time. The same goes for achieving your goals. You take it one step at a time. There are six main steps to setting goals. One, identify what you want and why. Two, develop your goals. Three, prioritize your goals. Four, identify any obstacles. Five, create your action plan. And six, reassess. The first thing you need to do is figure out exactly what you want and why. Examine the reasons you want something. Is this a goal that is essential, like finding an apartment? Or is it a goal to improve something about yourself, perhaps as a student or as an athlete? Maybe it's a goal that addresses the responsibility you have. Have you chosen a goal because it sounds good or because someone expects that of you? Choose goals based on what you really want to achieve, otherwise you're setting yourself up to fail. When I was 17, I heard the exam about being a foreign exchange student. So I decided to take that test without um, consulting my parents or my um, school teachers because I just wanted to pass the test and 
tell them that I'm going to the United States. So I did that after, because I was already um, passed the test, they couldn't really say no to me. Since my junior year in high school, I was involved in my life skills program at our school, being a peer tutor or a peer mentor, where I would work with the children um, individually, as a group, as a whole, and growing and learning from this was just the most amazing experience to me. It has led me to the most difficult decision most freshmen have in college or most students have in college in choosing a major, which is special education. Being and learning everything I have from these children has led me to believe and led me to know for certain that this is what I want to do with my life. I can imagine a day or a week or a month without seeing these children or thinking about these children. This is a perfect opportunity to look back in your journal, check your values list, your balanced life sheet, and identify what you want. Are you on the right path? When focusing on your goals, one thing to keep in mind is the difference between long-term and short-term goals. A long-term goal is like running a 10K. It requires time and effort and usually takes several steps to accomplish. A short-term goal is more like a sprint. It may be one of the steps in your long-term goal, or it may be a simple goal you want to accomplish for the week or the day. Set short-term goals that are possible to be achieved. Set dates for them and you know, just keep your mind focused on your goals and you'll get there. Having to separate my short-term and long-term goals in terms of community service, I know if I wanted to go over to Ronald McDonald House and volunteer for uh, a Tuesday during that week and I knew I had certain tests and I knew I had other things to commit to, I would eventually move it into something I would have to do later. In order to start your race on the right foot, you need to develop your goal and write it down as an action-based statement. Developing your goal is figuring out the basics of what you want to do. You need to be specific when writing your goal statement. Be very detailed and focus on exactly what you want. You need to have a clear, precise picture of what awaits you at the finish line. Make sure you state your goals in performance terms, not outcome terms. What I mean is, your goal should reflect an improvement on your personal achievements, not an outcome of what might be out of your control. I've made short-term goals and I've, you know, I set deadlines for my short-term goals and then hopefully I achieve them. N nothing with, I have to win this or I have to win that, but goals that I can achieve and I can make by a deadline and then long-term goals, my long-term goal still hasn't been achieved, but still working on it. If your goal is to make the final round of your next speech contest and you don't, you may be disappointed, even though you improved your scores across the board. If your goal is to improve your soccer skills rather than to become a starter, you are less likely to experience disappointment due to factors outside your control. If you improve your skills and become a better soccer player, you will be happy whether you make the starting lineup or not. The reward of goal setting should originate from the sense of accomplishment, not from outside recognition. When setting a goal, you need to have a way to chart the time it takes to accomplish your goal. Being able to measure progress helps you move along and gives you some mile markers along the path to see where you are. When writing a goal statement, break it down into the exact steps you'll take. Imagine where you want to be and then work backwards to see what you need to do to cross that finish line. Write down each step with its own deadline. Time limits are important. They help you focus by giving you the due dates. It's like writing a research paper. If your teacher didn't assign you a due date, you might still be writing that paper assigned last year. I do have in mind the sort of thing I would like to do when I'm done with school, so that helped me get there a little bit faster, and I wasn't intending to graduate early, but I knew what I wanted to do from the start, so that helped, and it's made it all that much easier. Deadlines was an interesting situation in the project because <clears throat> as opposed to due dates, or championships, I was dealing more with real world, real time deadlines. So more than not, I'd wait three and a half months for an answer from somebody, or I'd have to have something prepared within an hour and a half. And each time was something brand new to me. A new Every phone call, every presentation was something brand new, and it could either make or break my project. So it was kind of a do or die situation every time. And the deadline situation made it just that much more uh, 
and stressful. Use action verbs when writing your goals. They help encourage activity. Be specific. Avoid fluff words. For example, instead of saying, I'll do better in English class, say, I will get at least a B on my next paper. Your goals must be attainable. Don't set a goal that cannot be reached. If you have never ridden a mountain bike off-road, saying you're going to enter and win a 5K race might not be an attainable goal at this time. A better goal would be to say you're going to learn to ride a mountain bike and complete a race. On the same note, don't make goals too easy. They need to be challenging enough to give you a true sense of achievement. If you have more than one goal, you need to prioritize them. You should classify your goals from the most important to the least important. The most important goals are often the ones that are essential to your livelihood. An essential goal would be to find housing before going off to college. Ranking your goals will help if they conflict with each other. Remember, the order of importance of your goals may change over time. Re-examine your goals regularly to make certain that they are properly reflecting what you're planning and working towards. Be certain that short-term goals do not interfere with the more important long-term goals. Remember, goals that are worth getting usually require some sacrifice. You also need to figure out a way to monitor your progress. You need to track what you have done and what you still need to do. Again, this is why time limits are important. They help you keep track of your progress. Another important step in setting goals is to identify any hurdles or obstacles. You don't want them to surprise you and trip you up. There are three main types of obstacles. Physical, conditional, and psychological. Physical obstacles are beyond your control. An example would be if an apartment you plan to move into was rented out before you put a deposit down. The only thing you can do about this type of obstacle is to anticipate setbacks and have an alternate plan to fall back on. Conditional obstacles are current conditions that make achievement difficult. An example is if you want to compete in a basketball tournament and you injured your knee the week before. You obviously wouldn't be able to compete. You can overcome this obstacle by changing your timetable. Psychological obstacles are the hardest to overcome. They exist in your mind. Telling yourself that you can't do something because you're not strong enough or not smart enough are examples of psychological obstacles. The only way to hurdle these obstacles is to believe in yourself. You have to become your biggest fan. Imagine yourself crossing that finish line and act accordingly. A lot of the hurdles I've had to overcome in terms of participating in different community service activities has been also my life. You know, during high school, you have your friends, you have your schoolwork, you have your job, you have your family, you have all these other things and you wonder how can I fit community service into that while being able to focus on all of these different aspects equally. It has been a challenge in order to maintain the level of community service I've wanted to have all throughout high school. It, it seriously comes from prioritizing and knowing what you want and knowing that this is what you want and knowing how to get it. The obstacles are probably finding right people around me. The hardest thing was that I could not speak English when I came here for the first time because Japanese is so different from English. What I had learned at Japanese school was so much different from what I should have known. I was very patient and I, believe I trusted the people around me so they could help me improve in my English. Uh, I had to give up a lot of time with my friends and family, especially when I moved away. It was hard. I was younger and couldn't be around friends, couldn't be around any of my family for five years. This is a very competitive market and since I know what I want to do, um, I come into a lot of people that also know what they want to do and my good grades have helped me as well as my persistence, but there, there are a lot of other people that want to do what I want to do, so I just have to keep trying and get more and more experience. I think the hardest part about reaching my goal was the enormous amount of people that were saying that I couldn't do it or that I shouldn't be doing it. Um, I was overstepping the bounds of a high school student, not doing academics, not doing sports, but trying to change his community. Um, 
A lot of people stood to lose a lot of money if my idea went through. It turned a lot of people against me, it turned a lot of people against the teachers that were helping me. After you've written and prioritized your goals and have identified your obstacles, you are ready to come up with a plan of action. Think of it as a training schedule to improve your time before the next big meet. Instead of writing down food menus and workout times, you're going to list your goal information. Just like a training schedule, a solid action plan provides order and organization. Your plan should list your goal, reasons why you want to achieve this goal, the steps you need to take, deadlines, and a list of possible obstacles. You should keep all this information in one organized space. An organizer is a great place for this. It has space to take notes and a calendar to write deadlines and monitor progress. Give yourself room to make notes in every area of your plan. You will want to mark down when you finish a step, adjustments you need to make, or note what further steps you need to take. There are basically three things you need to do. Follow your plan, monitor your progress, and revise your objectives. The first thing to do is start working on your plan. Figure out what resources you need to start on your basic steps and reaching your goals. Set milestones for yourself where you monitor your progress. Constantly measure your results so you can tell what's working and what needs to be changed. Finally, don't be afraid to revise your objectives if something isn't working. You're not changing your goal, you're changing the path to get there. When you honestly reassess your goals and your objectives for reaching them, it can save you from getting sidetracked or stuck on the wrong path. Uh, I started playing tennis at the age of six and I got into it just through a summer camp that I went to and enjoyed it and started playing and then started setting goals for juniors, started playing the junior tournaments and tried to be number one in the Southwest and then national rankings and so forth and so forth. First, I learned English in Japan. Um, we must learn English at junior high school when we are 13, 14, 15 years old. Then I really loved that class even though it was really, really hard. Um, then when I went to high school when I was 16, I continued studying English really hard and I kept a good grade in my class because I know that someday I wanted to go to the United States. After deciding that I wanted to major in broadcast journalism, I went to the school counselor and found out different opportunities the school had to offer. And then I looked around the community for different companies and even looked um, into moving to other states to find internships that would suit me and my interests. Sometimes you find yourself unable to start on your plan. There could be several reasons for this. If you find you're procrastinating, ask yourself why. Are you scared to fail? Don't know where to begin or how to begin? Are you worried about the time needed or worried about actually succeeding? When you get an internship, you might do a little of this or a little of that, but as long as you are going in a certain direction, then you know you're moving and you'll get there eventually. The hardest part, keeping myself motivated. It's hard when you lose and then you gotta come back the next morning and work hard again. That's definitely the hardest part is trying to get yourself up after you get down and over and over and over again because it happens throughout your life. I had to give up um, my family when I was 18. That was the first time I was away from my family so long, over like 10 months. And I had to give up my friends. I had to give up seeing my grandparents. That was really hard, but I knew that someday I would come back to Japan and I would be so much happier if I did give up something right now. So many times in this project I was told that I wasn't the person to do this or I shouldn't be doing it or can't be doing it. But through conveying my idea to other people, I knew I'd always have the public opinion as to I was doing the right thing. I had so many people behind me. With that kind of support, it was really easy to keep my eye on the future goal as opposed to just this small barrier that was put in front of me. My leadership teacher always used to say that all a person had to do for us as young adults with ideas is to crack a door and we'll do the rest. And uh, from that point on, it was, it was more inspiring in the fact that 
you couldn't stop us. And at that point, it was such a snowball effect, I dared people to stop me. And I let myself roll with that. Staying focused on your goals is very important. What keeps me driven and keeps me very focused is knowing why I'm here. Why do I want to do this? Why I want to be in this community service activity? Why I want to go to school? You know, it's just knowing that deep down inside it has to start from there, that that's where you want it. It's not, it can't come from the superficial layer where it can easily come and go. It has to be deep rooted inside that you know that this is exactly, not exactly, but this is what you want to do. There are many ways to break through your anxieties and get started. Start by working on your goal for a short period of time. Even if it's only 15 minutes, at least you will have started. And sometimes that's the hardest step. Reward yourself after each finished step. It's good to look back at how far you've come, and it's great motivation to know that you're coming up on another reward. If you feel that you do not have enough time, look at your activities. You may be trying to do too many things. Write down all your activities. Weigh their overall importance and cut out the ones that just aren't important. Examine how you use your time. Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. It's what you do with those 24 hours that sets you apart. I think with any internship you have to be willing to start at the bottom and work your way up. And whether you have to move or work for free or whatever you have to do to get where you want to be, you just have to be persistent. Physically. I gave up a lot of time, money, effort, energy, um, very scarce resources to a high school student. Um, but in all actuality, it was what I absolutely loved to do. I found exactly what made me tick. So the only time I ever felt like I was giving something up was when I wasn't working on the project. In terms of community service, it becomes a little demanding almost if you don't schedule your time right. If you want to do X amount of community service in the amount of time, you, ha you know you have to rearrange your schedule a little bit and I know I've had to give up a little bit of my free time knowing that I wanted to get this in during the week or I wanted to go to Andre House on the weekend or I wanted to do this Sunday morning so prioritizing your life is very important. I would say to you know keep your head up and work hard and don't give up and things might go bad some days but you just gotta wake up and do it all over again and keep your spirits up and everything will work out. Another way to ensure success is to stay positive. Focus on what you learn, not just the completion of the goal. Even if you don't finish, appreciate what you have done. Continue looking for other opportunities if something doesn't work out for you. When working towards your goal, visualize success. Seeing your goal accomplished and imagining how it will make you feel can help you through the hard times. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Everyone needs someone on the sidelines cheering them on. Accomplishing a worthwhile goal takes a lot of work and you should get support wherever you can. Get help when you're not sure how to do something. Find people who have experience. Read a book or take a class. Also, get help when you're feeling down. Have people who you can turn to when you need encouragement. Many people find that one of the most important factors in achieving their goals has been having a mentor. A mentor is someone who has already accomplished many of the things that you are working towards. A mentor can give you guidance and inspiration. They've already run the race and know many of the hurdles that you will face. An important quality for mentors is that they be approachable. A good mentor is willing to share failures and struggles as well as achievements. Inspiring mentors are people who are still learning and improving themselves. Remember that any relationship should never be one-sided. Bring your own enthusiasm, ideas, and encouragement along. Be willing to work under your mentor for the privilege of learning from him or her. A good strategy to help you achieve your goals is to stay organized. Keep everything in one place. Track how much time you've spent. List activities that will help you accomplish your goals. Check off each step as you finish it. Keep a list of phone numbers of people to call when you need help. Don't feel guilty if you need to give yourself some time off. Balance is important to your sanity as well as your happiness. And after some time off, you'll be more energized to take on the next step. Above all else, be persistent. Even when you get frustrated because it's harder than you imagined, 
don't give up. The most important things in life never come easy. I think I can stay focused on my goal, um, which is to become a translator or to be able to ing speak English much better than right now, is that um, it has been my dream to speak English and to live in a foreign country. And I always remember that when, like, whatever I do, like going to school, going shopping, making friends, I always remember that this is my dream. So I'm not going to give up for some little obstacles that I will have in the future. I haven't found many obstacles that I don't consider to be challenges. And I think these challenges make a job more interesting as well as more exciting. And I like, I like to overcome those challenges. Pretty much just by, I'm just looking in the future and what I want to do in the future. And it's keeping me focused on my goals and trying to keep me from getting distracted by other things going on. My advice to you would just be find out what it is you like. Try different options. Don't be afraid of anything because it isn't those many different discoveries in which you do find yourself almost. You find out what you like and you find out so much more about yourself. In terms of setting goals, my biggest advice is to be flexible. Um, case in point with this wildlife park, my goal at the very beginning was to keep a golf course from being built and to save 120 acres for a wildlife park right next to my high school. That obviously wasn't attained, but through that came over 500 acres within Arizona, 25 locations within Arizona, a trip to Israel, and a trip to the United Nations. And by no means do I think that I never, or I failed in attaining my goals. It's just that they changed a little bit. In terms of attaining goals, don't limit yourself. There's going to be enough people out there that are going to try and do that for you. Um, understand that goals wouldn't be goals without a little bit of uncertainty. Don't be scared. Just keep yourself going forward and eventually it'll all work out whether or not you feel like you attained it or you just learned from the process. Remember, no one ever won the prize who didn't begin the race. Work hard and you can be proud of yourself, whatever the outcome. Now go out there, on your mark, get set, goals.